I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. That, my friends, is Leonardo da Vinci. And, of course, what a master, an impresario he was of so many of the great arts, of painting, of sculpture. I mean, a visionary. And, again, it is fascinating to hear what he has to say regarding the urgency of doing, doing, acting, using your knowledge. Knowing is not enough. We have to apply. That's what we do here every day. And if you're not practice trading with us, if you're not listening intently, if you are not studying to show yourself approved, spending 10 to 15 minutes a day, we're not talking about days and days of work every week. We're talking about you putting aside 10 to 15 minutes a day structured to study these markets because by applying that knowledge, you can master this art. And folks, this is not about mathematics. Some of the best traders I know have no formal education at all. They have street smarts. They can sit here and follow these charts. They dedicate the time and energy on a daily basis. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. People don't get rich quick unless maybe they're thieves and then they typically get caught. You're getting into my world now. I was formally trained, of course, as a criminal defense attorney and I've seen people who get rich quick. Typically, they don't keep those riches. We're talking about learning to read these charts and the beautiful thing are our gorgeous entry points, our weekly vertical crossovers and what you really have to learn it's how to ride that to the maximum that you can. And again, of the 12 we've had this year, 11 of those have been wildly successful. The only one we haven't had work was the recent one on gold with the crossover going down. And now gold has gotten real fishy on us. We're going to talk about that as we get later, but it's interesting. We see stocks are up for the day, bonds and gold down, Bitcoin, real estate, and oil all up. Let's jump into these charts. We got a lot to do. As I said, stocks are up 0.70% for the NAS, I'm sorry, for the S&P 500. We see so far, look at this. What do you see happening when you look at the Heiken Ashi candlestick price movement? You see a sideways slide underway weakening is what we see there. Price percent oscillator, however, is pushing up again through the 200 period moving average on. How many times have we seen that happen? And then it devolved back through it. Well, we'll see. Uh, like we said, up for the day 0.70%. Look at the candle we have this week. About a doji means lots of indecision. We have the weekly heading up. We have the two-day down. We have the four-hour down. It is, it is indeed interesting right now. We're going to move from the weekly. And again, price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator losing upward momentum. Two-day chart, we see that two-day price percent oscillator still below the red signal line. Now, of course, the last two-day candle, full one, ended on Tuesday. This is the first day of the latest. It's a green up candle pushing through the two-day trend line. The derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. We'll see how things go on Thursday. Oh, by the way, don't forget markets are closed Friday for the holiday. For here in the States for the 4th of July holiday. I know it's July the 3rd, but America is closing down for the 3rd, and then the holiday is on the 4th. Things will be open on Monday. Now, we look at the 4-hour chart. We can see where it crossed over going up back in the afternoon on Tuesday, then up in the morning, up a little higher in the afternoon, pushing through the two-day the two trend line in the morning. So we'll continue to watch, pay close attention to what's going on. But again, that weekly chart is still technically moving up as far as the price percent oscillator goes. Remember, we use all the charts all the time. And boy, we have lines going every which way, don't we? So, and what's nice about that spread is it shows you where the weaknesses are. What's going down the most? The four hour. 
where's the two day, and then where's the weekly. So again, we'll continue to watch, see what these charts have to tell us. Let's go to the Qs up 1.17%. The Qs, of course, are the NASDAQ 100. And look at how the candle is shaping up now. It is a green candle. It does have a wick on the bottom, but again, continuing to push up. The high last week was 251.15. So far this week, 251.52. So reaching a higher high. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator losing some momentum. Go to the two-day chart. What do we see there? Big green up candle, first day of the latest one forming. Are we going to get a two-day recross? We may pay attention to that. Remember, not as good as a weekly vertical crossover, but a two-day recross uh, can be helpful to us. So pay attention to that. If that does do something tomorrow. It will close, of course, at the end of the day on Thursday, which of course would give you a jumping in point for a potential practice trade around 350. So watch that. It, uh, practice trade it if it gives itself an opportunity and you think it's worth investing your time into for that practice trade, by all means give it a shot. We shall wait and see just what happens. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillators heading up. First day of the latest two-day candle. Go to the four-hour. We see two days of up movement there. Crossed over in the morning going up on the four-hour chart on Wednesday. So again, interesting to see and watch. We will just see how long and how far these markets will keep going up. Remember, if you are liquid, my friends you can follow the charts to your heart's content. If you are not liquid, if you have your practice trades invested in things like mutual funds or other items that you can't get out of quickly and at low cost, you are stuck. And in today's world, liquidity is what it's all about. That's why I did that training and released it to you earlier in the week on liquidity. Liquidity is so very, very important. Special training for you today. It is on be very wary of profits. And by profits, that is profits as in biblical profits. Uh, it's not about biblical profits, but it's not about P-R-O-F-I-T-S. Uh, it is about profits, people who tell you they know everything. Don't we see that all the time? If you, and I don't, and I don't encourage it, but if you watch CNBC, if you watch Bloomberg, and you see all these experts, these prophets that come on to tell you what's going to happen, and they are routinely wrong, and every now and then when they're right, they claim that they have proven themselves. Well, again, remember, a broken clock is, is correct twice a day. Doesn't mean it's anything you should rely on. The only thing we rely on here is price movement. That's what you should rely on. Let's go to 20-year bonds. We see them down for the day, 0.31%. But again, as we look at the weekly chart, we can see price trying to rise. Remember, this last week, the high was 165.32. This week, 165.29. It's a couple of pennies off, not reaching a higher high. Look at the price percent oscillator heading down. Derivative oscillator still negative, but losing downward momentum. So the, the weekly chart is still in a confirmed down move. Go to the two-day chart. It crossed over going up back on Friday the 26th. And then it looks like it's losing some momentum. A red down candle forming first day of this latest two-day candle. Derivative oscillator starting to lose a little bit of momentum. Price percent oscillator about flat. So again, keep your eye on things. If you see it rotate back over and cross over going down, unless there's a big down day on Thursday, may not happen then, but might give you a jumping in point on a two-day recross going down that would allow you to jump into, say, an inverse fund. TBF is the inverse fund for TLT. You can do a practice trade there. Look at the four-hour chart, the half-day chart. We see where it topped back on the afternoon of Friday the 26th and has been moving down since then. Things pulled back or pulled up, we would say, uh, toward the end of the day on Wednesday, but still a down day, down 0.31%. So we're going to leave bonds now and go to gold. Gold had a down day, 0.45%. Remember, we crossed back over going up. Again, I don't like sloppy areas like this. You look back on gold, 
Do you see that anywhere, my friends, in the past? You see it not even when it tried to get sloppy, not crossing over. But look how clean the transitions in gold have been. Even back when we had uh, what looks at this very short chart, I mean, we, we still had a great jumping in point for a one-week moneymaker on a practice trade back in um, March of this year. And then we had that beautiful crossover going up. But look at how sloppy it's gotten here in June. We'll see. Maybe gold will just, just buck it up for us, but not doing that yet. And we'll see how things continue to move down for the day, 0.45%, almost laminated price percent oscillator. I don't like it when the charts get sloppy, but again, we just deal with it, don't we? Look at the two-day chart. We had an up two days following the weekly vertical crossover Monday and Tuesday, and now we've got a red spinning top. We'll see what happens on Thursday and just how things go. Maybe gold will gain a little bit more energy and pop back up, but that's where it is today. Price percent oscillator about flat, derivative oscillator gaining a little upward momentum. Red open box spinning top means a slowdown in the up movement. And then on the four hour chart down in the morning, that's where the big down was, a bit of a recovery from that down move in the afternoon. So we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see there on gold. And we so appreciate you being with us. Hey folks, the course, that is Accelerated Market Mastery is closing soon. If you're interested in it, before you contact me, please watch the video that's attached to everything. It's in all the show notes, whether you're watching this on YouTube, iTunes, whatever it might be, if, you get, if you're a member and receive our daily market review. Remember, you become a member for free at chartingwealth.com. Just go there and sign up and you'll get the special trainings like the one I was talking about today about being wary of profits. The program starts in mid-July. It is a three-month program with three months of follow-up question and answer sessions. And again, please watch that video. Don't know when and if I'm going to teach it again. It will probably be three separate courses each will probably be priced at the, at the price of this one three-month course. So again, can't tell you when I'm going to do it again. It's so much work on my part, but I love teaching you guys, and uh, I made a commitment. I'm going to do this. If you do want to be involved, we're about to fill up the course, and I am about to close it. I need to hear from you here in these closing days. Otherwise, We'll see you on the backside when and if we teach it again. Now, let's keep moving on. You'll see a link in the show notes for all that information. Let's jump into Bitcoin. Up for the day, 0.78%. We're going to start on the weekly chart. Still a weak weekly chart, a red down candle, price percent oscillator, flattening out a little bit, still heading down. We go to the two-day chart we can see that it's still negative. It needs to cross over going up if there's going to be a possibility of jumping into an up move or that two-day chart is going to pull the weekly over to a weekly vertical crossover going down. Just not getting any feel for that yet. And derivative oscillator still negative also. We go to the four-hour chart. It did get enough energy at the end of the day to cross over going up. Maybe that'll bring the two-day over to a crossover going up and give you a two-day recross so you can jump in and ride Bitcoin up on a practice trade. We'll wait. We'll see. We'll let you know. What about real estate? Up for the day, 2.32%. That's nice to see. Look at how that price percent oscillator kinked up after falling off for quite a while. We see a green spinning top indecision tending up is typically what that means. Derivative oscillator is losing a little bit of momentum, but that all-important price percent oscillator is kicking it up a notch. Look at the two-day chart. You're going to get soon a two-day recross in the same direction as the weekly. If that happens, all good. You might jump into a practice trade going up on real estate, or it may devolve and start heading back down again and pull the weekly over. So Watch for the two-day recross. If that doesn't happen, watch for a weekly crossover going down. What about the four-hour, or I'm sorry, the half-day chart? Well, we've got 
Two and a half days of up movement, strong up in the morning on Wednesday, further up in the afternoon. Like we said, 2.30%. That's nice to see on real estate. Lastly, we go to gold. Uh, gold. We go to black gold. We go to oil. Oil up 1.03%. What do we see happening there? It's trying to cross over going up. It's trying on the weekly chart. Maybe it will happen if it does, of course. That will be at the close of the market on Thursday. So keep your eye on it. Not encouraging you to feel like you have to practice trade it, but it's something to watch for. Look at that two-day chart. It is managed, the price percent oscillators managed to move above the 200 period exponential moving average line. And again, the high on the prior two-day candle was 28.55. High on Wednesday, 28.51, so didn't reach a higher high yet. So keep your eye on things. When that candle closes on Thursday, might give you a jumping in point if you want to potentially jump into a long position on oil with a weekly vertical crossover. Not been excited about this chart because of the sloppiness we saw back in 2019, but We've been following it a while, and it's trying to give us a weekly vertical crossover. We'll follow that, see how that works. We look at the four-hour chart, and we can see that it, too, is trying to cross over going up, up in the morning, a little higher, or really about the same in the afternoon. High was 28.51, high in the afternoon, 28.49, so it didn't quite get as high. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day. So a lot of interesting things for you to follow. Hope you are using a trader's journal. Hope you are printing out the daily market worksheets that we have, the weekly market worksheets, and the trade worksheets. All of those are in your notes. You can print those out for free. They're in your show notes, PDFs there. So just print them out and use them. If you want to buy a spiral-bound version of them, of course, we have three-month Traders journals available for purchase, along with our book, Charting Your Way to Wealth, the second edition. Follow the link in the show notes to purchase those. Again, closing out Accelerated Market Mastery very soon. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.